Hi, I'm Brad Henry with Landell Controls and Shelly Automation. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the test run utility in the Easy Builder view of Cognex uh, Insight Explorer. So a couple days ago, my manager came up to me and he asked me to do a very difficult inspection of determining whether black spools are being fed into a packaging machine on a conveyor belt. So, so I said, okay, I can do that went out, got a bunch of pictures of some spools there, spools not there. After a couple of days of uh, difficult uh, deliberation, arrived on a solution. Using the uh, brightness tool to differentiate between the dark pixels of the black spool and the light pixels of the background. So set everything up and got it working. And this worked fine for a little bit until he comes back and he says uh, that it's starting to fail and it shouldn't fail. So he asked me to fix it. So I go back and I take a look at it, find out that he's been putting spools in upside down and that's why it's been failing. Now, I want to I want to change this and I want to make this pass, but I want to make sure that whatever changes I make don't cause failures down the line. They don't cause unintended outcomes and cause me to just chase my tail forever. Well, how do I do that? Well, that's where test run comes in. Test run can be found on the palette on the right hand side. So let's get into configuration. So it opens up this dialog box here and asks where the images are that you want to take a look at. If you're doing it on a camera, you have to use an FTP uh, server or a directory. So you get this warning here, but I'm on an emulator, so I don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna ignore that. Then it asks for uh, variants. This is optional, but a variant is a job variant. Perhaps you've got a, a slightly different product with slightly different parameters that you wanna test for. Uh, this is where you account for that. Further down in the job section, you've got the setup actions. Now the setup actions set the uh, parameters of your tools. So in this case, I set the, uh, the minimum and the maximum of the spool presence brightness tool, the minimum maximum values to uh, 16170. I'm just gonna keep it that way for a bit because with this very complicated job, I don't know what the effects will be of changing this. So I'm just gonna see where I'm at. So let's keep those the same for now. And limit tests. Limit tests are, are when you have operators who have some control over parameters of the vision system, but you wanna make sure that those parameters are set appropriately. Uh, Good example of this is exposure time. Since this is on a conveyor belt and it's moving, you don't want your exposure set too high. So I produce a test to verify that exposures is within certain bounds. So if it's too high, I'm gonna get motion blur and that causes issues. So I'm gonna test for this and this is gonna run before everything else runs. And we get into image selection. Now this is where you gotta pay the most attention. This is where you select your images. So I've selected all the images and the green is a, is a good image. So this is good because there's a spool here. So this is good, good, good. But this is bad because there's nothing there. So this would be a, a failed image. And so I mark it as bad appropriately. Now let's take a look at the defects that we're gonna test for. So let's check each defect that exists in this image. It'll pop up with a job fail, but then you add however many you wanna add. So I'm gonna, so I've added a defect that asks if the spool is present. How do we tell if the spool is present? Well, the spool presence pass, so that uh, brightness tool is gonna be a pass and that's gonna be true. So 
It's just logic, really. Now, is it present? Yes, it's present. That is a defect that is present. So you do that for the rest of the images. But this is a fail. So this is a failed image, so I check that yes, this is a fail, but there's no spool there, so this is not checked. And spend a lot of time and get this get this right, because this is this is the ground truth. This is what uh, test run is going to judge everything against. So be sure to double check it. Further down, you have hardware tests. Now these check for things with the camera, like if lights are on or if it's connected up and, and running. And you can set those similar to how you set limit tests and it will run pretty much the same way. Now, since I'm on an emulator, this doesn't apply to me. So I'm going to uh, not do anything with this. Same thing with cleanup actions. If you're running a job live, you want to set things back to the way that they were after your run, test run, especially if you're running on a camera. But this doesn't apply to me, so I'm not going to do anything with that. So to sum up, I have set everything the way it should, the way I've got it set now. I haven't changed anything because I want to figure out where I'm at. I have set some limit tests, make sure the operators have everything, have everything set with an appropriate range. I've selected my pass fail images and I have defined some defects that I want to look for and mark them down in every image. So I'm good. Now let's run it. So that was pretty short, but you could see that it cycled through all the, all the images and ran my job on every one. And I got the results back. So this red square means that I got a result that I didn't expect, they didn't define in, uh, in this defects uh, section or this image selection section. So something's off. So let's go take a look. Well, the setup passed. We got what we expected. And the limits are within where they where they should be. The exposure time is within the limit. So I've got this green circle, and the green means that it is what we've expected. So job images are giving us some issues. So let's go take a look at that. So these, these passed, and it detected a spool, which is what we want. No issues there. So these red squares here mean that uh, we got a result different from what we expected. So let's investigate a little further. Let's open one of these up. So this job was supposed to pass, but it failed. So we get a red square from there. And why? Well, there's supposed to be a spool present, but it's not detecting that there's a spool there. So we get a discrepancy, which gives us this uh, this red square again. And same thing with this image. Okay, so now I know where our problem is. So let's try out some, some solutions. So let's modify the tools. Now we could modify it down here, but then you have to cycle through again. So since we're using test run, let's open up our box and go to setup actions. Remember this sets the parameters for the full tools. So so obviously the issue is that the brightness tool isn't wide enough. So let's widen this and more and we'll hopefully get everything. So you set your parameters. So let's run test run again. Oh, got that red square. So something's off. Let's go take a look. Well, the job limits, everything's within the limits. Setup went well, but uh, we got something that we didn't expect. In this image now, these ones, they passed. We've got what we expected. There's a spool there and it passed. Something happened here. Let's take a look. Well, a job fail was supposed to occur, 
but a past. And, and there's not supposed to be a spool there, but there's a spool there. So we've caught this defect. So obviously we need to go back and, and uh, change things. So let's go back to configure and go back to job, set up actions, and let's just move it, just tighten it up a little bit. Okay, and exit out of that. Now let's run test run again, see what we get. It's green. So the results tools gave us are the results we expected. So this one here that was giving us trouble, it was supposed to fail, it did fail, and spool present is not supposed to occur, and it did not occur. This is exactly what we expected. So you can see that the uh, combination of tools and settings allowed all images to pass, and I have fixed my job. Uh, so hopefully you found these videos useful.